Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. I'm very happy that you've joined me here today. If you're new to this channel, on this channel, I speak to finding our own personal style and gaining confidence in that own personal style. But as well as that, I like to speak to being a minimalist in a fashion world and how we can sort of navigate through that and be all style inclusive. With that, I like to share little tidbits on my own personal style that is edgy, chic, minimalist. So if that sounds like something that you would like to join in on, make sure to click the subscribe button as well as the little bell to get notified when I post new episodes. Welcome to the channel. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Okay, so today I am super excited because we are doing a Q&A. Yay! Uh, it has been a while since I've done one of these. Um, I used to do these monthly and they were just a lot of fun and then I just kind of got out of the routine. If you clicked on the video for the title description being Ken Minimalists Wear Trends, then do not fret my friend because I will be answering that question and getting into it within the Q&A. Nordgreen is gonna keep us on task today. It's gonna keep me concise. If you're not familiar with Nordgreen, Nordgreen is a watch brand based in Copenhagen, Denmark. The watch collections are ethically made in Danish owned union certified factories. And I love that the watches match kind of like my ethos of quality, function, and style. And also then at a very good, fair price. So as if amazing watches at a fair price was not enough, they've also just recently launched a sunglass collection with three different designs. So I've got my pair here. I've got the Bornholm and I absolutely love just the timeless yet contemporary style of the sunglasses because I know just like their watches, I can purchase these at a very good fair price, but are also going to work style-wise for years and years to come. Yes. So if you'd like to purchase your own watch or pair of sunglasses, definitely make sure to click the link down below and include my discount code. And there we have it. Should we get into this Q&A? Let's do it. Okay, so first off, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody that did send in a question. However, I don't think I'll be able to get to everybody's questions today, but definitely gonna try my best to get to as many as possible. Let's get started. So the first question comes from Vicky. Uh, Vicky asks, when you don't have a lot of money, what pieces should we focus on when starting from scratch trying to achieve a timeless wardrobe with a slight edge? So I did just do a video recently called the 10 essentials for building a capsule wardrobe. Usually basics are a little bit of a lower price point. I'll link the video down below and just I would prioritize those basics first because you could get those 10 basics and have actually a great wardrobe out of just those 10 basics, but it's also a great foundation to build off of. Okay, next question is from Janet. So Janet asks the term effortless. This is, this is a good question. The term effortless is used often. Uh, what does it really mean? Does it actually take effort to appear effortless? Is looking effortless an admirable goal? How would you achieve the look? Great question, because I definitely use the word effortless a lot. So effortless style, I use it a lot when I'm referring to chic because I think it's um, the chic style is kind of the one that encompasses it the most. Um, chic style is looking for that effortless sort of understated style that kind of gives the vibe of like, oh, I just woke up like this, you know, like that you didn't really try. So I think the idea is that to get that effortless style, you sort of set yourself up with options and choices that will give you that effortless style in an effortless way. That's why I speak to that a lot where choosing pieces that, you know, are timeless, are classic, you know, have a little bit of edge, whatever it may be. So my kind of go-to effortless combo is the, you know, classic, timeless, sophisticated pieces with some more edgier, maybe sometimes even trendier pieces to bring in that contrast and ultimately give that effortless look. And it's such an easy formula for me that it makes it effortless. It makes it super easy to style an outfit every day. On the effortless end, the biggest thing to keep in mind is ultimately just wearing what you love and what you feel the best in and what makes you feel the most confident in and not going over the top, not going overboard, just finding little you know, combinations or formulas 
that work for you and make it easy for you every day. Um, another little like formula or method that um, people use is kind of like the sandwich method. That's a good method for chic is the, you know, you have like kind of a classic basic outfit and then you sandwich that with, you know, maybe a bag and shoes or a hat and shoes or some sort of accessory and shoes or maybe it's a jacket, specific jacket and shoes. So kind of sandwiching it with those more stylish, you know, cutting edge pieces. I could go on every, all day about effortless styles. So uh, we'll just stop it there for now. So Lorna asks, apart from jeans, what is the outfit you are looking forward to wearing post-pregnancy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am desperate to wear jeans. I cannot wait to wear jeans. I do have like one pair of maternity jeans that I sort of wear sometimes, but if, if anybody's been pregnant and has worn maternity jeans, they suck. They do. They suck. I guess to say like, I, I don't really know, there's not like a specific outfit, but I think it's just in general, like my favorite go-to outfit of just the, you know, tight fitting jeans, high-waisted jeans with like a oversized slouchy, you know, t-shirt tucked in and like a blazer. <laughs> I'm so excited to wear that look again. It was just to kind of get back to my normal style because I don't feel myself in a lot of what I've had to wear during pregnancy. Um, yeah. So Ashton asks, has your style changed since becoming a mom? What's your favorite mom outfit? Mom outfit. Has my style changed since being a mom? No, I've had to really make sure I'm prioritizing my style. And so I've really had to think about the pieces that I am bringing in to make sure I can still have that effortless style every day. Um, but no, like I am a firm believer that if you want to have st still have style and have cute outfits when you're a mom, you fully can. Like, I get it. Like, I, I'm I'm on board with the pajama moms, as people call them, um, where they just, you know, rock, you know, pajamas all day and just don't care. And I have mad respect for that. I think for me, I feel best of myself when I style in a look and feel really good about my outfit and my aesthetic. Um, when I do my makeup, style my hair, it just makes me feel like the best version of myself. And I'm not doing it for any other purpose or anybody else other than myself. Like I'm strictly doing it for myself because who else cares really? I mean, nobody else cares <laughs> whether or not I show up to school drop off in a, in a styled outfit. My favorite mom outfit, I w probably would say is just my favorite go-to of just jeans with a t-shirt and a blazer or like a cool steezy sweater um with some like high top sneakers or like some really edgy boots because i always think that that just looks classic and effortless and um it always shakes things up a little bit but also just being like it's a really practical outfit as well like it's comfortable i can move around h king asks what inspired you to start your channel what are your tips to keep an edgy style through pregnancy? Um, what inspired me to start my channel? It's kind of a random reason. Um, I actually left the fashion industry to become a videographer, a freelance videographer. So I was doing that for a couple of years and we moved from Southern California to Portland. So I was a freelance videographer and we had just moved to Portland and I had a one-year-old and I was trying to rebuild my business and it was a struggle. So then I thought, oh, I'll work on personal projects and reach out to people to see if they want to collaborate to, you know, make a documentary or, or whatever. And so many people just kept coming back and saying, well, what's your following? What's your following? What's your following? They had no care in the world about like, if I was talented, what my, you know, synopsis was, what my concept was like, they could care less. They just wanted to know what my following on social media was. And after a while, I just got really, really frustrated because I wasn't creating anything. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to start a YouTube channel because I can control that. That's something I can control. I don't have to try to get other people involved. Um, it's something that I can be creative with. If I get a following, great, because then that'll hopefully help me get to collaborate with these people. Or maybe it'll kind of show a portfolio and maybe it'll attract some brands who would want to hire me to do their videos. So that's sort of what inspired me and got me to start doing it. And I kind of just said, okay, I'm going to do it for three to four years and see where, where it end, where it 
gets me. And I chose the topic of fashion because I wanted a specific niche and I worked in the fashion industry for almost 10 years. So it was something I knew, I knew well. So that's kind of what, what made me choose that. Yeah, now after four years, I'm just in love with making <laughs> YouTube videos. I'm having so much fun having a, a community that I get to kind of collaborate with and, and chat with. And um, I, so it's it's been awesome. And um, yeah, I've been able to <laughs> collaborate with brands just in different ways. Um, and I still have the motivation and hope that someday I will get to make a documentary <laughs> or a short film. So we'll see. And tips to keep an edgy style through pregnancy. I would say the way to stay edgy during pregnancy is to not buy maternity clothes. Um, I think a lot of maternity clothes are just very matronly and they're just, there's not a lot of edge to them. And there's maybe like one or two brands that have some more, you know, edgier or contemporary pieces, but they cost a lot of money and I don't want to spend a lot of money on maternity clothes. So that's definitely given me an edge is when I shopped for maternity outfits, buying pieces that are non-maternity. Next one's from Sherry and she asks, what are your top three go-to always choose favorite styles and brands of jeans? I would say my three favorite brands, Citizens of Humanity, Mousy Vintage, and I think Mother Denim. Oh, I don't know. No, I, I really like boyish denim too. Mother denim, I love the fits more. Like I love, 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 love the fits and the cuts and the silhouettes and just the edginess of mother denim. But I love boyish denim's quality and their sustainable approaches to producing denim. Talking about jeans, I mean, I could I could go on for days on, on the jeans that I love. I love G-Star for a myriad of reasons, for the fact that they got like really edgy silhouettes. Um, and they're also doing a lot of sustainable approaches with denim. That's a hard question for me um, to narrow down to three. My go-to styles for jeans is definitely like a high-waisted vintage inspired jean. I love the vintage inspired jeans, you know, with like the button fly, that sort of thing um, that just kind of break in real nice to your body. And then I love like a good tapered boyfriend fit or like a slouchy, you know, drop caught drop crotch fit. I love like a cropped boot cut with like a fringe to kind of add a little bit of edge. I love, love that. So yeah. Louise asks, how are you feeling and how long till babies arrive? Currently right now I'm 32 weeks. So yeah, I'm in my third trimester. I feel pretty good. I'd say the th main thing for me is that I'm getting really <laughs> big. Um, because I'm pregnant with twins, um, at 32 weeks, you're actually technically the same size as you would be full term uh, with a singleton. And I didn't even get that far with my first. I was 38 weeks when I had him. So yeah, I'm just feeling a bit, I am definitely feeling uncomfortable a lot of the times, um, especially at nighttime, I'd probably say. I'm still keeping it going, still keeping it moving. I haven't, you know, become sedentary yet, I guess. And so the babies being 32 weeks and being being twins, they could basically arrive at any time, really. Um, but with twins, you can't actually go past 38 weeks. So um, yeah, I technically have six weeks left. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they basically say be prepared for them to come at any point. So we are definitely very prepared for them to come at any point. So I guess if all of a sudden this channel goes quiet, you'll know that that is what's happening. Um, I will definitely try my best to kind of communicate, but yeah, exciting. Okay, next question is from Terry. Can minimalists wear trends? Being a minimalist doesn't mean that you have to be this like certain way. You don't have to be within this minimalist aesthetic box um, that you can, you can definitely color outside those lines. You can definitely be whatever you wanna be as a minimalist. Um, cause yeah, I think there is definitely that stigma that to be a minimalist, you almost, you kind of have to be boring or stagnant or not have like any flair. And I just think that's so wrong. Can a minimalist wear trends? Definitely. I am a minimalist and I still am a sucker for a good trend. I think it just depends on how you look at trends. Like I think you just have to look at trends differently. And I now to this point, look at trends as something that's just in inspiration. It's just a way to kind of bring in a new inspiration into your wardrobe. Trends 
I think are taken quite literally where people are like, oh, this is what's on trend. That's that. As soon as it's not on trend anymore, I can't wear it anymore. And I think that's just silly. Like if you look at anybody that's got good style, they're not worried about trends. I'd say it's more like if there's a trend that comes up that is just pulling you in and you're just super excited about it and you're inspired by it, then yes, by all means, incorporate that into your wardrobe. But I think just be mindful of it in the sense of like, okay, if I'm going to invest in this trend, um, if I'm gonna invest in like a blazer, you know, if I'm gonna invest in a Barbie pink blazer for the Barbie core trend, like, do I love this color so much that I know I'm gonna wear this for years and years and years? Like that I'm just gonna be able to reinvent this through years and years. Cause it can definitely be reinvented. A Barbie pink blazer is iconic. Like if you like bright, bold colors, you're not gonna go wrong with that. Okay, next question comes from Matilda. Any ideas how to look edgy if you have long hair? Oh, good question. Yeah, because I talk to this a lot where I say, you know, hair has a big impact on our style and how I think, you know, my shorter, edgier hair, ooh, it's just kind of falling flat here. Um, gosh, this heat just does not, my hair does not like heat, I've realized or humidity. <laughs> kind of mentioned like how I get a lot of my edge with my hair. I think the fun thing about that, about having longer hair and a more feminine sort of look with that, is that there's a lot more room to play in the contrast world. So I sometimes feel like I can't go too masculine with my style because my hair definitely has like a masculine vibe to it. And because I always want that balance, within my looks. Um, I feel like sometimes if I go too masculine, it'll push my style a little bit too far over the edge with masculinity, which sometimes there's a time and a place that it works and I love it. But for the most part, I'm always looking for that balance. With longer hair is you have a lot more room to play with the masculinity side of things to bring in some edge. Um, I also think if you have longer hair, there's definitely ways of styling your hair to make it a little bit more edgy. There's definitely like the look that's coming back of like the more feathered, crazy, wild, you know, flowy, you know, wavy hair, longer hair with like all the layers and stuff, which I absolutely love. And I think for that, you just, you know, need to find some inspiration. Maybe I always like to go to um, Pinterest cause it just, gives you all sorts of goodness with the algorithm. If you have a hairstylist talking to your hairstylist, cause they are a wealth of knowledge. Like I've learned so much from my hairstylists in the past. I'm sitting down with them and saying like, I'm looking for to edge up my hair a bit. Like, what do you suggest? Beza asks, who would you say is your main inspo on your outfits? If I had to like pick specific people, I actually find a great deal of style inspiration in Diane Keaton. I love her style. She's always just done her thing, doesn't ask permission, just is fabulous. And she definitely plays with kind of the masculine, with the feminine, with kind of an avant-garde twist. And I absolutely love it. I love her style for the fact that it is her style. Like there is, no other person that I think has style like her. And um, it's just strictly organically her style. And so I find a lot of inspiration just in that kind of confidence and that steeziness. Another one that I actually really love her style is Leanne Ford from uh, HGTV from the uh, Restored by the Fords show because she's got a very effortless, understated, edgy style. I spoke to it before, I think, being open to inspiration, to just different things, even open to inspiration from a completely different place, finding inspiration on with somebody that doesn't have any sort of relation to your own personal style. Um, maybe they're just completely opposite to you, but you find like just a little something that inspires you from their style that you can then translate into your own style that just makes it completely different. I just love that. I love that kind of collaborative experience being open to really any sort of inspiration yeah all right so i think that is a great place to stop i hope that you enjoyed today's episode if you did like today's episode you know what to do give me that thumbs up comment below share with your friends and subscribe and make sure to click the little bell to get notified when i post my new episodes every week 
All right, my beautiful fashion friends, you stay healthy, stay safe, love and support each other, and we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.